Right. Y'all got the whole visual outlet. <laughs> I just said it. Right, yeah. That's the name, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Y'all got me. <laughs> but back here, look at this. Right. Look at this. No, she back here with the buggy, though. It's always <laughs> one ghetto person. You can count on it. You <laughs> so can you count, count on it. it. <laughs> Terrible. What up, though, y'all? This is Ami with the Real Visual Outlet, and is always beside me. So, so. And today we have a special guest on the show with us. What's happening, y'all? It's damn man. Real Visual Outlet, my peoples. <laughs> nah, no, that's actually that's donated furniture. That's actually Royal Oak thrift store furniture. Ninety nine dollar <laughs> couch furniture. <laughs> it's real couch couch. It's Persian. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> this fit me too. I ain't that big. This is <laughs> Tell us your social media and where you are from. I'm from Holland Park for one. I like to start that off. You know, I love to say I'm from Holland Park because people don't really <laughs> indulge in Holland Park. Mm -hmm. But my Instagram, HP underscore dead man. You can add me on Facebook, add Danny Dan. I don't have a Snapchat no more. Twitter, no, I don't have a Twitter. Mainly Instagram, just tap in with me. You wanna do a song, I really don't charge for features. Just hit me up, you wanna work, we work. Period. All right, tell us um, what it was like growing up in Highland Park for you. Growing actually, up in general. Growing up in general, was actually good, but you know, everybody had a little hard times and everything. Who gonna overcome it or who gonna stay down? That's what I like to say. But growing up in Holland Park, I seen a lot of crazy shit and I've seen a lot of good things. Like literally, the best things I've seen happen, happen in Holland Park. The worst things I've seen happen, happen in Holland Park. So I say it was good, it was bad, but it went bad enough where I'm like, damn. Straight, I want to get away from here for, mm -hmm. for kind of. I do, of course, I want to get out the hood, but as of right now, ain't nothing too bad where you got to run away from it. And then, growing up as a child, it was fun, <laughs> it was fun. We had the blockbuster on Woodward. Mm -hmm. I'm that old, I'm that old. <laughs> uh, Ashley, and I'm 20, I'm really only, I'm not old for real, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was actually fun. You, you knew anybody from. Eight block radius, even though Holland Park is only like 10 blocks, mm -hmm. for real, for real. But everybody knew each other, schools rival, but it's regular, it's the hood. It was it was all fun. But then when they start tearing everything apart, everybody started leaving, people started going to college, people started dying, you know, death rate went up. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, what's this one this one guy I know, he a police officer, he said that um in Holland Park, if uh if they doing like a chase. They don't do um like uh street chases or nothing like that. So like if they gotta get out their car and chase you, they not doing that. Damn. They do a car chase, but if they gotta get out the car, they just letting you go. And I was like, that's kind of messed up. Like, <laughs> no hell, you gonna hop out the car, <laughs> get the runner, right, and start chasing him. He gonna hit an alley on you, <laughs> right? He gonna hit his phone quickly if he can. I'm like, hey, y'all, come out real quick. <laughs> over for you. you you're not, that's not going to be it. No. But I've heard that during the summertime, they have people that they're trained to have in the back of the cars, mm -hmm. and they let them out, and they just... <laughs> <laughs> the day I meet that will be the day I get an SRT. <laughs> right. SRT, no more feet. And I ran track, but they do that. I smoke weed. <laughs> My strength done went out the window. Uh, All we got is strength to dribble the ball and shoot it and go to the studio. That's about it. Me. Right. So HP Dan, man, we know HP is Holland Park. Yeah. Right. So Dan, that's your name? Yeah, my name is Daniel. Dan. Well, okay. I HP prefer Dan. Danny or Dan. Danny boy. <laughs> or people favorite thing, Daniel son. Daniel son. <laughs> and then it took me a long time to figure out where I where they got it from, but Karate Kid. <laughs> I was like, what? What, what is Daniel son? <laughs> I hate it. That, that and Dan the man. Dan the man. That is so annoying. Or the damn Daniel. Damn Daniel. I hated that area. I mean that era. <laughs> I hated that. I remember that. Joke. I stayed getting damn out of Daniel. class for that. I stayed it, but I once when I say damn damn, the teacher ain't hear that, but you heard me tell him shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I hated that. That was the worst. So how did you get into, you know, doing music? 
always was good with words more so than anything and i like to write it kept me calm i guess it taught me a lot and i wasn't good at a lot of other things besides basketball or drawing so and i liked the poetry as a child but then i got older then that Detroit music started hitting I'm like, man, fuck that poetry. <laughs> oh, hey, we gonna get up in this, this real Now, what shit. were you talking about, you know, as far in, in your poems? You know, where they're a little more felt, you know, we was heartfelt. Soft. I was soft with it. <laughs> you was soft with it? Then, you know, I was being a little, little hoe bag. I was young, had a little couple girls, little breezies, you know. <laughs> then I make a little poems for them. Then I make a couple myself, just what I'm thinking, because Everywhere I go, no matter what I'm doing, whether it's serious, funny or not, I always think of something to write in my head. Like, literally. probably when I get home or when I leave from here, I'm probably gonna write a little something. That's about it. That's good. But poetry, just from being young and seeing a lot of stuff, just writing shit. It wasn't, I was never serious with it. But then, when I heard Doughboy's Cash Out Crown and Shine, I said, fuck this poetry. And once again, <laughs> we gonna start rapping for real, for real. Because it <laughs> dropped on my, they dropped it on my birthday. Oh wow. Man. So that was life changing for you. <laughs> <gasps> Man, Payro came on that beat. I'm like, yup, it's time to get a bag. Time to get a bag. I can't do no more poetry. <laughs> I love it. All right. So do you think that music is like mostly um enjoyed more for the beats or for the lyrical flow? Depending on what you like to hear. Mm hmm Some people like to hear what the person actually says more so than the melody. And then you got your other people that the melody is what catches it. They drift. Mm -hmm. Like me, with my songs, I love sample beats. Okay. Once I hear a sample beat, a little background, got a person singing in the background, I don't care how the rest of the beat go. I want it. I'm going to go hear it rap on it. You know, with sample beats, you don't really get your residuals. You don't get, like, paid out for, you know, fully as mm -hmm. you should. You know, because you sampling it and stuff yeah. like that. So, how do you think that would affect you in the future, you know, if you continue to, you know, go off sample beats? At that point for me, because with my sample beats, they be a little more grotesque than a lot of my songs. My sample beats, they actually mean a lot. Mm -hmm. So, at that point, it just, it ain't about the money to me. Mm -hmm. That's just me getting my word, my message Your out. Your word and message out. I'm, okay. I know I can get paid for it, but it ain't going to be as much. Me knowing I can get paid from it, opposed to getting zero dollars for what I'm doing now, that's something. Mm -hmm. What's a track that of yours that is, you know, your favorite out right now? Ooh, ah, that's out right now. Or that you created in general? So song that's out right now, actually, that I like the most would have to be Heart Cold. Heart Cold, you can't stomach what I'm feeling. Okay. Four grams, different strands, it's a different feeling. A lot of pain when I ain't had that chicken. I sat back and watched Brody in the kitchen. A lot of demons in my life, I'd have been living hell. I don't wanna see death, already seen the cell. It's consequences when you wanna make that big sale. Everybody by your side until you need bail. This life is a story and I'ma tell mine. I'm black and I'm young, I ain't got much time. Yeah, that's my favorite one, cause I feel like that's the song that got me where I'm at now so far and a lot of people messed with it and it showed that i was serious mm -hmm. yeah even my father tapped in and told me like oh it look like you serious now nah. <laughs> <laughs> look like you gonna go ahead and take it serious i can't say nothing i can't say nothing because he know me a lot of things i don't take serious i just do it because i know i can hmm. it take something to hit me for it to be for me to take it as serious i don't know why i don't take things as serious as i supposed to but when I actually have to, that's when I buckle down. And it's hard to get me out of my bag once I'm down for it. But when I'm not down for it, it's just like whatever. Mm -hmm. Game. Free game for all artists. Most of us, we like to weigh out our options. We don't like to just drop them. Because no matter how hard the song sounds to us, no matter what, if they don't like it, I don't get paid. I mean, or I don't get that recognition. Or don't nobody look at it for real, for real. Don't nobody like it. Now, I am an artist that don't really care for real, for real. I drop anything, not anything, but I drop something that I know not too many people gonna mess with, but I like it. But that's when you see the real in somebody. Now, it's the difference between marketing yourself and just doing what you wanna do, or just going off what the fans want. Mm -hmm. You can do it all, but you have people that just pick, that just pick and choose around it. Mm -mm, I do it all. I like to market myself a certain way, like, say for instance, 
but time I was on the radio. If I'd have dropped a mixtape DM, it wouldn't have been smart. Because you had a lot of people that were dropping mixtapes around that time. I wasn't 100% ready. I was still trying to get my name out there before I spent all that money on it and not too many people heard it. So by the time the summer hit, I should be straight. Mm -hmm. I should be straight on dropping the tape. And by me having a, quite a few songs put up, I could just drop a little mixtape with about 12 songs on it. Mm -hmm. Still got a couple more songs. That ain't even compared to how many songs I got written. That's just ridiculous right there. Written songs, I ask myself every day, why don't you have at least two tapes out yet? But it's just time mm -hmm. for me. It's just all about time. It just uh, it's not. Everybody's right. not gonna be a one hit wonder. Mm -hmm. That was the case when I dropped my song "Stressing" last year. Felt like one of them days. In my head, love my shit. All right. I've been up stressing, Danny ain't been getting no sleep. Blow up, but rekindle my mind while I sit and think. I live in a city full of fucking demons, bro. I keep my nine tucked cause these niggas really creeping. I'm on my own shit, it's only right that I get it. When you complete the mission, man, and make your journey worth it. When you out the way, they gon' see who really getting it. Family laughing that I rap cause they don't really get it. But I ain't tripping though, I'm ignoring all hands. I'ma stack it up for a year until my wrist then. I be on, but that's not the case. Some people actually gotta take steps for this. You can't just. I can't can't do what T Grizzly did. Hop out of jail, give him your first day out, right. boom, three hundred on your head. You, mm -hmm. you got to check. You you living well now. You know you can't do what DZ did. Drop a couple songs. He out there. You know, mm -hmm. Big Sean. Big Sean kind of did the same thing. He dropped a little tape and did a song with Chris Brown. My last out of there. That's love. Same thing. The, usually with yeah. Detroit people, it take one song for them to get you. Now, the people that they getting out like Peasy and all them, only reason they haven't had deals yet because they didn't want them. They didn't care for them. They, mm. they was doing their thing already. Independent artists get money. Literally, anybody know. A deal is good, but you can also get fucked out of your life and your music.